Hey finders, welcome back to Fortune Finds. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Violet Voss HG Fun Sized Mini Eyeshadow Palette. Look at how cute this little guy is and the shades are to die for. The mattes in this palette. They are the prettiest crease shades. They practically blend themselves. They are so seamless and so wonderful to work with. Like I just really, really love the mattes in this palette. That's not to say that the shimmers aren't as wonderful, but the only thing is, is that with the shimmers, they are a little finicky. You do need to watch how you apply them. Be sure to stay until the end of the video because I do do somewhat of like a rewind and bring you guys back to previous times that I have worn this eyeshadow palette. I've been wearing this a lot for the last like month, maybe like month and a half. I've had this bad boy for a while, but I definitely wanted to get it down packed to really let you guys know the pros and cons and the best ways to apply and the ways to totally not apply. So I've gone ahead, I've done my research. I like to think of myself as somewhat of an expert when it comes to this palette. If you are not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. I would love to have you and also click that bell button this way you get a notification whenever it is I'm uploading a new video here on my channel. So without further ado, let's stop babbling and let's get on to the Violet Boss HG eyeshadow palette review. So I have played with this many times. I do have a lot of thoughts on this pretty, pretty palette. It's super cute, very convenient for travel, but we will get into that along the way. So I've already done the base of my face. If you're interested in anything that I am wearing today, I will write everything down below in the description bar. So be sure to check that and I will just label it like what's on my face. Very straightforward for you guys. So I'm going to grab a fluffy brush, Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH32. Beautiful crease shade right here. I don't like a very light brown shade and oh, I primed my eyes using concealer and then I went over that with a little bit of translucent powder. That has been the best way to use this palette in my opinion. And then you guys know me, I'm bringing this shade a little bit higher than my natural crease because I do have those hooded eyes. I'm not like putting it almost right underneath the brow and bringing it under the front of the brow, like into the nose, kind of like that. I love, love, love the matte shades in this palette. I think they're super pigmented. They're very easy to blend. They're not splotchy, they're not patchy. They're so nice. And then I'm just bringing it into the eye like that. I kind of want to create like a feline effect. So I want the shadow, as you can see, to like go up in a little arch. I found that that really flatters my face. I've been playing around with makeup, obviously, when I'm not playing around with makeup. And I just feel like this does wonders for my eye shape and really lifts my overall face and gives me like a facelift like that, as it does for most people. But with me and these hooded eyes, it's kind of frustrating sometimes, especially because my brows, like this arch is so much higher than this one. I'm trying to work on it, guys. It's just, it's a lot harder to work on than I thought it was going to be. I'm just doing windshield wiper motions and then pushing it in towards the lid. The fallout isn't too bad. So if you want to do the base of your face like I did and then go in with shadow, you're not going to get a super ton of fallout on your face. So that is always a plus in my book. And it's not too, too dusty. Like it kind of, the shadows do kind of get a little bit in places in the palette, but it's not bad. Like I don't think it would drive like your average person insane. I'm going to go in with this orange because this shade is so beautiful. How could I not go in with this orange? And I'm going to take that on a smaller fluffy brush. This is a GH36. Put this like a little bit lower than that crease shade that we just applied. Okay, now you know, I always want to go ahead and darken up the outer third of my eye. So I'm gonna grab an even smaller blending brush. This is a JH40. And I'm gonna grab the darkest shade in the palette, which is this deep chocolatey brown right here. I'm not tapping off any of the excess. I probably should have let you guys know that a little earlier in the game, but I forgot. And I'm just like pushing this, pressing this into the outer third of the eye just to like create a little bit of dimension. Kind of comes off a little bit purpley. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera, but in real life, it does have a little bit of like a purple hue. I'm gonna build that up to that little lift. See what I'm doing here? I'm kind of just like taking it and putting it to a point and then bringing it down and then blending it across. See what I did there? So drawing a line from the tip of my brow down to the lid and then blending that across. 
and then I'm gonna go all the way through with whatever is left on my brush. Now, if that point is too much, you can go ahead and dip back in to the orange or maybe shade that we went in with initially and just blend it out, but I kind of like that little tail right there. And I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time going and perfecting. The only thing tricky with doing this is that you kind of want to make sure that the tails are even. So I have a mirror in front of me that's a little bit lower and then I also like to use this mirror too and just like get a better idea and a better sense of where I need to place that darker shade to really make those little shadow wings that we created even. I find that having mirrors in different angles around you, I know it's like super high maintenance but i'm just saying if you can get like a few mirrors like one lower one higher and like maybe a palette mirror in front of you or even if you just have a palette mirror like holding it up to your face like this and then pushing it out and like you know just like changing where it is can really help you get a good sense of what the overall makeup looks like to everyone else around you you know so you want to get different perspectives it's not always good to just like go into your mirror like this and like dare right here because you know you want to bring it out a little bit you want to see what other people are seeing and even sometimes when I do it and I look at different angles it's not always perfect and my eyes are two different shapes so but I, I will show you guys how to go ahead and tweak the outer third of the eye or like fix the little wing if you mess it up because I can always use a tweak because like I said my eyes are two different shapes so it's kind of hard for me sometimes no matter how much I pull away from my mirror and look away grab this gold right here i'm going to grab it on my finger and i'm just going to pat this on the lid where there's no eyeshadow metallics in this palette are so juicy they're so pretty and they go on really really nicely i'm going to tell you a few things about them though okay so the best way for me to honestly apply this shadow and i have played with this quite a few times is i will go in with my finger first like you guys just saw and then i will go in with a damp brush so this is a jh42 this is one of my favorite brushes ever it's super small it's like a flat detailing brush i'll spray it a little bit with my setting spray just a little bit and then i'll go ahead and pick up that shade again and i'm just gonna perfect it and see how like that wet brush gives it such a foiled effect. It kind of like changes the color a little bit. It makes it a little bit brighter. So if you want something a little bit more vibrant, I would say go ahead and use a damp brush to apply any of the shimmers in this palette. This I feel like just brings the copper and the shadow out a little bit more. But if you want something a little bit muted, then I would go ahead and just go in with your finger or go in with your finger and then to perfect it, go in with a dry brush. But I kind of like that very foiled metallic look so i'm gonna do the same thing on the other side going in with my finger and i like to use the opposite hand and the opposite finger because i feel like you have more control when you use the finger on that side rather than taking this hand and reaching across you know you don't get that same angle and then your eyeshadow isn't as even see the two shades this one is definitely more foiled than this one. So this is using dry shadow and then this is using that damp sponge to go over it. So I definitely want my eyes to be even. So I'm gonna go in with that damp brush and I'm just gonna perfect the shade, but you can definitely tell a difference. Now I'm gonna use my favorite shade in the palette, which is this raspberry color right here. It's so pretty. And I'm gonna use that same brush. Now what I did is I went and took a makeup remover wipe and just like lightly patted this over it and then I'll go on the back of my hand and just remove any of that excess dampness from the makeup remover wipe. So you see where the outer third and the gold meet, I'm gonna lay this juicy raspberry shade over that with the damp, oh my God, can you see that? With the damp brush. Just because it is kind of a line and I want to blend it a little bit, not too much. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wipe off those two fingers that I used to go ahead and stamp the gold on it. And I'm just going to run it over that line and just maybe blend a little bit better. We're going to move to underneath the eyes because I feel like we need a little bit of color under there. But I want to clean up the edges. So that's what we're going to do right now. So go ahead and grab some translucent powder. I'm going to be taking my Laura Mercier. I have some in the cap right here. So my Laura Mercier translucent powder. I'm going to grab this flat, somewhat dense brush. This is a Morphe M572. Dip it into the powder. I'm not tapping off any of the excess. We're just going to 
stamp this on the corner of the eyes and just really make those two wings shadow wings match so this is all that i'm doing and we're gonna like bake for a few minutes so you just want to make sure that there's some white residue you don't want to brush it off right away and you want to leave it on there so just let it bake for a few minutes and while that's baking we're going to move on to the lower lid so i'm going to take that tight blending brush again this is the jh40 that we used i'm going to lay down that transition shade and we're basically just going to go in sequence of what we did up top and I'm just gonna blend this all underneath the eye. Going in with that orange, doing the same exact thing and I'm just gonna use the same brush, keep it simple. I'm gonna grab this pink shade right here and I wanna put this in the inner corners and I'm gonna take that on a pencil brush. This is a Jaclyn Hill JH39. I'm gonna take that on a damp brush and I'm gonna bring it to like meet where we put the shadow underneath the eye taking that same brush I'm gonna grab that juicy raspberry shade again and I'm just gonna put this all underneath the eye I just really like the shade so that's what I want to do I'm gonna grab a fluffy brush and I'm just gonna whisk away that bake don't love the lightest matte shade in this palette it's not bright enough for me so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna hop into my BH palette such a good palette oh my god I love this palette um, and I'm going to grab the whitest shade in this palette put this underneath the brow bone blend this out a little bit more I'm gonna go in with that crease shade that I think we put the orange one on this and I'm just gonna whisk this over the top let's curl our lashes throw some mascara on and then we can reassess where we're at think about it if we want to go anywhere else collab wow mascara my favorite mascara I just wish that it would get a little drier because this like new mascara thing I'm like over it a new mascara is so hard but for some reason I feel like they pack a lot of mascara in this can you see like all of the mascara that is like flowing out of the top of this go back in I'm gonna go in with my dying L'Oreal telescopic because this is so dry that it's just gonna maneuver the mascara that is on my lashes already my lower lashes as well I just need to throw on some highlighter because I didn't throw on any highlighter. I'm going to be using the Balm Cosmetics Mary Luminizer. I don't know. I've been liking this one lately. I'm just going to grab that on my trusty highlighter brush. And I'm just going to tap like the very highest point of my cheekbones, like right there. All right, so this is the e.l.f. Modern Metals shade. I'm just going to try and put this on without lining my lips. Uh, so let's see how this goes. Wish me luck. I did not like e.l.f.'s Modern metals collection but i loved this lipstick and the lip gloss okay i feel like we did a decent job at lining the lips what do we think i think i'm done i think the eyes look great i'm really into this look super dramatic and i'm loving this lip with it so i'll zoom you guys out we'll do our outro and i will give you my final thoughts I'm sure watching this video, you're thinking like, oh, what could she possibly say negatively about this palette? In this video, it was very evident that I really do enjoy this palette. And while I do, I just want to give you guys the rundown from my previous experiences using this palette. I used the two crease shades that we used today. I did the exact same thing. I went in with the lighter one, then I went in with the orange. And then the first time I went in with this raspberry shade, I put it on my finger and I just literally stamped that all over my eye. What happened with that is I didn't use a damp brush and while I just used my finger, I found that like four hours into wearing my eyeshadow, which isn't a very long time, the pigment of the raspberry was still there, but all of the glitter in the raspberry kind of like migrated 
to my lash line up top. It almost looked like I had put a raspberry matte eyeshadow all over my eyes, and then I just had like these little reflex of sparkle along my lash line. My first impression of this palette after wearing it for only a few hours was no, like these shimmers don't last, they don't stay in place, they just kind of like fade into nothing. And this is the point of me doing review videos is I sit down with the palette or whatever else it may be, foundation, lipsticks, I use it multiple times and then I have this pros and cons list of things about the palette and I tell you the best way to use it. So the best way to use it is to really make sure that you're going in with your finger and really getting that pigment in there, but then you definitely wanna go in with that damp brush because I don't know what it is, but the damp brush really ensures that those glitters in the shadow stay there and they don't migrate and they don't disappear because honestly, at the end of the night of the first time I wore this, it was like the shimmer had evaporated. That's not to say that the shimmers are totally foolproof. Honestly, if I were to check back in with you guys in a few hours, which unfortunately I'm not because it is 10 o'clock on Sunday and I need to go to bed, I am so tired. But if I were to check in with you guys in a few hours, you would see that the glitter isn't as super like stark and pigmented and like foiled as it is right now. So just be aware of that. I mean, if you go ahead and apply it the way that I just said, it will definitely be more sparkly and more shimmery than it will have been if you just went in with your finger. Also, you definitely want to prime your lids. These shadows do not blend as nicely if you don't prime your lids. Now, when I say prime, that means you can either go in with an eyeshadow primer or you can go in with concealer and then just make sure that you set the concealer with some translucent powder. Overall, like this totally gets my stamp of approval. There's just a lot of options in this and I love how compact it is. It's perfect for traveling and it's really nice that you get a mirror inside of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up down below. Leave me some love in the comments. What do you guys think about this palette and do you own any Violet Voss products? This is the first ever Violet Voss product that I've ever tried and I'm super interested in seeing maybe what else is in their line. So if there's anything that you've tried and you've liked that you could recommend, please be sure to leave it down below. I would love to check it out. And also if if you're not yet subscribed please be sure to do so i would love to have you and while you are there click the bell button that is right next to it this way you get a notification whenever it is i'm uploading a video i'm hoping to just pump out some more content maybe make you guys more engaged and i just want to like constantly be in your face like it feels like i'm uploading almost every day so i hope that you guys are enjoying the videos and that you you know you're getting some helpful tips out of it and i hope that you're really enjoying the vlogs i know that's something different for my channel but i just thought it would be something cool and different and just you know give a little spice to fortune finds so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i had a great time as always thank you guys so much for joining me and i will see you in my next one bye finders Mwah.